his presence is in continuing to increase right now. him about your arthritis break the power of that thing loose them be loosed from arthritic pain thank you Lord. Jesus name there it goes at an increased level now it's easier to enter in this is where you can grab your we miracle adore easy you. we, we adore, adore feel the atmosphere change we adore you we Theology to neology, where we get on our knees and we find out about Him in personal relationship. It goes from our head to our heart as we see the unseen one and He begins to do for us things that we haven't even asked of Him because they're exceedingly abundantly above that which we can think or ask according to His power that works in us as the body of Christ, Magnify. the multifaceted variety gifting in the body. You are so valuable to God. You are hyper conquerors, more than conquerors. Nothing is impossible with God and because he lives in you in alignment, nothing is impossible with you. Oh, believer, sons and daughters of God, arise to your rightful positions. Arise to your rightful positions. Take your position in the body of Christ. You are the head and not the tail. Situations and circumstances bow their knee when you walk into the room because you're a thermostat that changes the temperature in the workplace. Hallelujah. You're not a victim, you're a victor. Take your position, humbly yet boldly, in alignment with the King. Higher truth, higher truth, higher truth. Everything that you have called out, a lot of people don't know that the doctor told me I was 90% deaf in my right ear. And on yesterday, Bishop Marston was talking to me in my right ear, and I told him I didn't hear him. He touched me. There was a warmth. Mm -hmm. And this morning, as you was talking about it, you know, Part of me was shamed that, you know, I have to tell people I can't hear in this right ear, but 
I was standing in the broadcast room and put my hand in my left ear and I could hear everything that was being said back there. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But then you talked about the knee and a lot of people know I had the motorcycle accident dealing with the knee problem. All right. But as you were standing there, the Holy Spirit said, touch him, just touch him. I said, but God, I don't want to draw attention. He said, touch him. He said, if you really want my healing, and, and at that same time, he said, those that's dealing with arthritis, and, yes. and my wife will speak to this. Last week, I went and I ran out of my medicine, so I went and bought some pills for arthritis, you know, just to take care of the, the pain. But as you touch me, I feel no joint pains. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's get up and walk on it. Thank you, Jesus. He's a restorer. He's a redeemer. He loves every person here. Remember when the Holy Spirit prompted me to say, if you can perceive it, you can receive it. He perceived it, and he did something that in the natural, it didn't make sense. He didn't want to do, he wanted to be respectful. But sometimes when you got an issue, God will have you do something that in the natural may be contrary to Levitical law. When a woman with a blood issue, and it's not legal for her to go out in public or even to shake a man's hand, she went out and she saw the Son of God, a rabbi, and she said to herself, if he's just a rabbi, I'll make him unclean with my blood issue when I touch him. But if he's who I perceive him to be, the son of the living God, the Messiah, the Christ, there's no way I can make him unclean when I touch him. Only I can become clean when I touch him because dunamis power will flow out of him because he's the promised Messiah who rises with healing in his wings. And immediately, immediately, he was gone. Immediately, see the power of God's coming on him again. Whoo! Just raise your hands toward him. Shh. See, it started with another miracle worker, Bishop Morrison. And then God confirmed it through another that wasn't even supposed to be at the service today. But the Holy Spirit said, go to the 8 a.m. service. I have need of you there. I have a divine appointment. Shh. When you're hungry for God, God will send somebody. When you're hungry for God, if nobody will go, he'll show up himself. When you're hungry for God, he'll call somebody in China praying in tongues. Because we're all one family. Neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free, but all one in the body of Christ. Your kidney or liver will work in my body. Shoo! In Christ. In Christ. In the anointed one. Did you notice when the atmosphere changed, it was easy? We came out of that place of, is this real? Is something happening? We became those that were on the stands watching the game to those that were in the game, moving the chains, getting those yards. And then all of a sudden, there was a breakthrough pass, and we got touchdown. Say extra points, Lord. Extra points. We want a two-point conversion. <sighs> there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Something else is happening. Feel it, I feel it. So you can feel when virtue flows out of you. When the glory realm, you can see it happening, you can speak it, and people won't all of a sudden, you'll speak it, it'll hit them. 
when Jesus walks into the room, you got the, the faith realm, outer courts, the anointing realm, inner courts, the glory realm, holy of holies. But when Jesus walks in, the rules are different. You don't lay hands on anybody. Jesus just walks by and touches people. And they go out and they go out under the power and you can't get them up there glued to the floor because they've had an encounter with the risen Savior like Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus because Stephen prayed, Lord, do not charge him with this sin. And Jesus got up off his throne when, when he saw Stephen say those words. And I think he said this. He said, Dad, look what Stephen just said while he's getting stoned to death. He said the same thing. I said on the cross, do not hold this sin to their charge. Forgive them, Lord. They know not what they do. I believe the father said, Jesus, son, what do you want to do? Let me go ahead. I'm up off my throne anyway where I'm seated forevermore. But something got me up. Look how much of me is in Stephen. Let's answer his prayer. Since I'm already up, I know that Saul is on the road to Damascus next week. He's got papers to bind and kill Christians. Let me go ahead and meet him on the road in response to Stephen's prayer. I'm going to knock him off his high horse of pride in, his, in my resurrected state. I'm going to blind him by the light. We'll send Ananias to a street called Straight to lay hands on him that he might receive his sight back and be filled with the Holy Ghost because Stephen has so much of me in him, let me show up on the scene. When there's so much of Jesus in you, he'll show up on the scenes in your family of those you prayed for, and they'll be knocked off their high horse of pride on the road to Damascus and pulled into their calling. And sure enough, Jesus showed up on that day. And Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus was changed. And then he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that we read today. Your prayer is powerful when in alignment. We have true authority to the degree that we're in alignment with the King. And we're with Him. All things, all things are possible. Will you take this home with you? We come to worship, but we leave to serve. It's not just a visitation that he wants. He wants it to be a habitation because he inhabits the praises of his people. This is a praise church. Hallelujah. Carriers of his glory. Take it home and release it. Jesus' name, higher truth. higher truth. Elevate us, Lord. Elevate our thinking. Higher truth. If you can perceive it, you can receive it. Grab it. Come on, give yourselves a great big hand. You can return to your seat. I just release what's on the inside of me by the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I just press it into you. There it goes. Shimotoko. See, sometimes you don't have to lay hands on. You just hug a person with the love of God. And he imparts spirit to spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, give her whatever she needs. Give her extra so she can give it to others. Say double. Double. There it goes. So whatever you speak when the presence is there, as the spirit is hovering over the face, when you speak it, it manifests. You shall lay hands on the sick. Thank you, Jesus. And they shall recover. There was a man who was on a board of directors of a multi-thousand congregation, been there 15 years, 
walked into a service out in California. The Lord had me call him out by word of knowledge. The Lord busted both of his ears open. Their denomination didn't even believe in it. I call it them pasty white folks. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. He got healed. He said, felt like a tra freight train went through my ears. He was 100% deaf in one ear, 85% in the other. He went back to his denomination. They said, are you sure it wasn't the devil that healed you? He looked at him. He says, here's my resignation papers. I'm stepping down after 15 years. He came out from among them. People started coming to him from his own denomination to try to get him back. But they were sick and infirm. He started laying hands on them. And the same Jesus that healed him that he talked against while he was over a multi-thousand member congregation with plenty of good programs. They had a nice feeding program. They had plenty of money. They had everything but Jesus. They, I'd rather be in a church that has nothing with Jesus than a church that has everything with no Jesus. And a man said to him, I just wish what you told me was really true because they messed up my eye surgery and I'm blind in one eye. And I had imparted to him that night that healing anointing at the direction of the Holy Spirit. And he looked and he said, let me pray for you. And he laid hands on the man's eye. And he spoke in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, the nail-scarred hand of Calvary that's now in my hand, I release it unto you. And he said, can you see? He said, I can't see a thing, but thank you for trying. I wish it were true. The man went home, went to sleep, woke up. His eye had popped open overnight, and he had 20-20 vision. <laughs> Say, another one's out of the church. Another one came out of the church. Now we got two of them that are out of the church that are out in the highways and the byways that are the church. Did you hear me? I'm not talking about this church, but you hear what I'm saying. They believe, you believe it. Miracles here. So then his wife came and she got delivered from a spirit of rejection. Came out of her. She'd been a Christian 30 years. That thing came out. She came alive. She started evangelizing. They're both on their knees. They're in the word daily. They're praying in the spirit. Then they brought the daughter. Suicidal in church. Underneath the pastor. Bible studies all the time, but no anointing to destroy yokes, to deliver people and set the captives free. I call my lovely Proverbs 62 wife, Joanna, which means gift of God. I said, would you pray for her? My wife is Miss Orange County, California. She wears a crown for services, and she crowns women princesses of the king of heaven they get their identity back sin falls off once they know who they are they have fractured souls she has an anointing to get women reintegrated in two minutes what 20 years of counseling cannot do she got reintegrated began to cry the spirit of suicide came off of her true story she left that service got so filled with god she went out evangelizing she started praying for the sick in Home Depots and Starbucks. People started coming out of wheelchairs. Twisted limbs would shift into place. Deaf ears and blind eyes. She was at Azusa now with 65,000 people. And somehow, because of God's favor, within 60 days of getting set free, she was suddenly on the platform praying in front of 65,000 people under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Heidi Baker laid hands on her, Bill Johnson, Todd White. She's like, how did I end up here? She got impartation after impartation after impartation because somebody brought her to church. She got an impartation, and now she's out being the church. You don't need a four-year seminary degree. You need an encounter with Jesus. That's what qualifies you and sends you. Sent versus went. That's the difference. Bishop, Pastor Olivia. Can we clap our hands for the man of God? 
Come on, come on, bless God for the gift. Come on, bless God for the gift. She reminds me of my mother. And my brother and my friend. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. But we'll take a little silver and gold too. No pain, no fortune. No riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver. Come on. Silver. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than share one more one more I'm getting ready to get married and you know when when it's two years ago I'm getting ready to get married and my father is 91 at the time and my mother had had a stroke years earlier and God has raised her one thing they told that they wouldn't live she'd never talk again she talks and they she'd never swallow again so they're feeding her for feeding tube I got on the phone with prophet Dan Bowler I said Dan I said would you pull over the car I believe God's doing something. About two minutes of prayer, I come home 20 minutes later, my mom's eating applesauce. She told that doctor, take this thing out of me. If you tell a Jewish woman that she'll never taste food again, she has no reason to live. Well, okay. God said, so it's years later. My dad says, I'm not feeling well. It's my hands itch. And my mom is with my fiance, Joanna, at the time. And they're looking through jewelry as she's giving her stuff, you know. We're headed to the airport. I'm going to send her back over to California before we go get married. And I pray for my dad's hands, but it's not a hand issue. But I don't know what it is. He goes to the bedroom. He says, I'm not feeling well. He goes and lays in the bed. My mom's in a wheelchair. My Fiance is looking at jewelry, and my dad begins to rock. Eyes roll back in the head, and he dies. But I'd had three dreams preparing us. The first two, he was gone from the planet, and that without remedy. The third one, there was a problem with the battery and the starter in his car. And I had it that morning. And we were divinely delayed getting out of the house because of the jewelry. You know, God will use anything. He'll take what you're interested in and use it as a tool to position you for what he wants to do. 
And I walked over as I saw my dad die in front of me. Never seen his son get married. Never seen the consolation of Israel type of thing. That's not right. And I walked over and I was calm with the shalom peace of God and the authority. And we prayed through. And I said, Joanna, she turned and looked. She was caught up in the jewelry. And I said, Joanna, I need you. She turned around. I said, it is an emergency. And she looked and she saw my dad laying in the bed dead. Eyes open, no life force in his eyes. And she got up and my mom turns around and sees her husband of 50 years dead. But God. And my dad had lost his, you know, what happens when people die. They released all that stuff. And I looked and I said, in the name of Jesus, dad, come back. Instantly, his eyes opened up. He said, what's, what's, what's going on? What's going on? The Holy Spirit says, call 911. And I'm not a hospital kind of guy. But when the Holy Spirit speaks, I obey. And my wife says, calmly, I think we're supposed to call the paramedics. So I said, honey, would you monitor him? while I'm on the phone. She says, sure. I called 911. They were there in five minutes. It was amazing. But he died twice more in that five minutes. The second time he died was when I was on the phone. You got to have a woman who knows how to heal the sick and raise the dead. And my wife is a lioness. You're going to love her. She's, she's a beast. I mean that in the most complimentary sense. You know what I'm saying for shizzle. And so, <laughs> and so she raises him from the dead the second time. I'm like, where's he at? He went to the bathroom. I couldn't keep him in the bed. I'm like, paramedics are on the way. The door's open. The ramp's open. So I go in, and he's standing there, and he loses the rest of and all over the floor. I'm not trying to be graphic here, but just sharing with you. Miracles happen in the midst of controversy. The word crisis is danger and opportunity rolled into one word. David had a crisis with Goliath. There was danger, there was opportunity. The danger was he could die. The opportunity was he would live and become king. Every time you're positioned in a crisis, you're positioned for a miracle. If you'll press into the fiery furnace, the Son of God will show up and you'll get promoted. You're not getting punished. You're getting positioned for promotion if you'll press through with the passion and the power of God and walk in his presence in his peace it will be perfect that you're in his will well i had that hope that's recorded anyway so here's what happened <laughs> had a bishop anointing come on me you know you hang out with certain people their anointings and mantles will rub off on you yeah. while you're with them you operate in stuff you don't operate in because you're under their authority or you hang out with them where one can put a thousand to flight two together in agreement in unity we'll chase ten thousand and here's what happened the paramedics arrive and my dad dies a third time but there must have been an angel present because my dad weighs about 160 and i'm holding him as he's standing there the paramedics are there, but he feels like an empty box weight-wise. But his eyes are completely open, no life force, no color in his face whatsoever. And the paramedics are looking. I said, give me one second. They're looking. I said, Dad, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come back now. Huh? I'm fine. I'm fine. What's going, what's going on? Who are they? Who are they? Go ahead and get on the gurney. Went out to the gurney, got in the paramedic vehicle. They tested him. They couldn't find anything wrong. I said, no. Take him to the hospital because the Lord told me to call you guys. He's affable, sanguine. He's invigorated. They get him there. They can't find anything wrong. They put him on a sleep study. There was something wrong with his battery and his starter. They said, the starter in the heart just like the dream and the battery, which they call the heart. And he said, son, they want in to put in a pacemaker. I said, dad, let them do it. And he said, but I want a miracle. I said, God is giving you a miracle. And in this situation through the pacemaker, they told him he would never dive again because he's an Olympic diver, you know, a national diver. 
I said, don't tell him that. I said, can you put in a little extra? He said, I'll put in an extra few inches for you, but don't tell him. Three months later, my dad won three gold medals off the 10-meter tower at age 91. And he just pulled down five more gold medals. He's still alive and takes care of my mom. Children, teach them how to heal the sick and raise the devils, raise the dead, because you never know when you might need it. Raise up in a child in the way they should go when they're older, they'll not depart from it. Amen. You can do it too. <laughs> silver and gold. Silver and gold. Tell your neighbor, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. No pain, no fortune, no riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Let me say this.